Have you ever stopped to think about how the plastic pipes in your bathroom, the vinyl floors under your feet, or even your credit cards are made? Chances are, they all have something in common, PVC. That's short for polyvinyl chloride, one of the most versatile and widely used plastics in the world. But where did it come from? And how exactly is it made? In today's video, we're diving into the fascinating journey of PVC, from its discovery to the way it's manufactured today. Whether you're a curious learner or someone in the materials or construction industry, this is a story you'll want to hear, right here on History of Simple Things. Our story begins way back in the 19th century, a time when the science of chemistry was still coming into its own. In 1835, French physicist Henri Victor Renault was conducting experiments with gases when he first synthesized a compound called vinyl chloride. At the time, he had no idea how significant this compound would become. It was just another chemical curiosity. Then, in 1872, German chemist Eugen Baumann took vinyl chloride a step further, unintentionally. He left a container of it exposed to sunlight. After some time, he returned to find that the compound had turned into a solid, white, brittle substance. That was polyvinyl chloride, or PVC. Here's the twist. Even though PVC had technically been created, nobody saw a use for it. For decades, it sat on the sidelines as a scientific oddity. A plastic that couldn't bend, wasn't easy to mold, and didn't have a market. At this point, PVC was a solution looking for a problem. Fast forward to the 1920s. The world was in the midst of rapid industrialization. Cars, electrical systems, and consumer goods were becoming more mainstream, and with them came a growing need for new materials. In the United States, Waldo Simone was a young chemist working for B.F. Goodrich, a company best known for tires. Seaman had been tasked with finding a synthetic replacement for natural rubber. While experimenting with various chemical combinations, he stumbled upon a method to soften PVC by adding plasticizers. This was the turning point. Before this, PVC was stiff and brittle, pretty much unusable for most practical applications, but with plasticizers, it could be made flexible, durable, and much easier to work with. Simone's modified version of PVC opened the door to countless new uses, from insulating wires to waterproof fabrics. This wasn't just a scientific breakthrough, it was a commercial one. With Siemens' flexible PVC gaining attention, manufacturers began experimenting with it across different industries. The first real wave of commercial PVC products included wire insulation, raincoats, and phonograph records. It was the 1930s, and the world was on the cusp of seeing plastic materials change everyday life. By the late 1930s, PVC production had ramped up in both the US and Germany. In fact, German company IG Farben had also developed a rigid form of PVC independently, which was being used for piping and construction materials. But then came World War II, and PVC really hit its stride. During the war, metal was in short supply, and industries were looking for alternatives that could withstand stress and corrosion. PVC fit the bill. It was durable, resistant to chemicals, and relatively cheap to produce. It started showing up in military applications, especially for electrical insulation and coatings. When the war ended, the infrastructure was already in place to produce PVC at scale, and industries were quick to take advantage of it. The 1950s and 60s marked a golden age for plastics, and PVC was at the forefront. As post-war economies boomed and cities expanded, there was a massive demand for affordable, durable building materials. PVC found its niche in construction, especially in piping. Unlike metal pipes, P 
PVC didn't corrode, it was lighter to transport, and it was far easier to install. It became the go-to choice for plumbing, sewage systems, and eventually window frames, gutters, and siding. But it didn't stop there. Manufacturers discovered that by tweaking the formulation, PVC could be either rigid or flexible, opening up possibilities in consumer goods, automotive parts, flooring, synthetic leather, and more. Hospitals began using flexible PVC for medical tubing and IV bags, while the music industry used it for vinyl records. It was everywhere, and consumers didn't even know it. PVC had gone from obscure chemical to industrial powerhouse in less than a century. Of course, no story of industrial success is complete without its share of challenges. And for PVC, that came in the form of environmental scrutiny. Starting in the 1970s, concerns began to grow about the safety of PVC manufacturing. The vinyl chloride monomer used to produce it is a known carcinogen, and workers in factories were at risk if not properly protected. On top of that, certain plasticizers used in flexible PVC, particularly phthalates, came under fire for potential health risks, especially in children's toys and medical devices. Then there's the issue of disposal. PVC doesn't biodegrade, and when it's burned, it can release toxic compounds like dioxins, which are harmful to both the environment and human health. These issues led to tighter regulations and spurred a wave of innovation in the industry. Safer plasticizers were developed, emissions during manufacturing were reduced, recycling systems began to emerge, although PVC remains one of the more difficult plastics to recycle due to its complex formulation. Still, these efforts have allowed PVC to remain viable in a more environmentally conscious world. From a forgotten flask on a lab shelf to the backbone of modern infrastructure, the story of PVC is one of transformation. What started as a scientific curiosity became a key player in shaping the modern world powering everything from clean water systems to life-saving medical tools. It's easy to overlook materials that blend into the background of daily life. But behind every piece of PVC lies a century's worth of innovation, trial and error, and industrial evolution. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.